One of my college roommates plays now for the New York Giants. He makes $100,000 every time he puts on a helmet on a Sunday. He doesn't care whether he wins or loses. He's there to play for his contract. They're there to stay healthy. They, the fans care more than the players do. But college is special because you play for passion, you play for your school, you play for tradition, and you play for the jersey and the helmet you wear. And the proposed solution by the NCAA does nothing to cure the corruption that's going on. It's threatening the integrity of the game. It's threatening to exacerbate it intensely. It's loosely analogous to the war on drugs in our own country. You have certain people, which I may or may not disagree with, who want to legalize drugs. And to be fair, it will absolutely put the drug dealer out of business. But you're not going to get at the root problem of drug dependency. The same way with college football. Two specific problems with the proposed solution. And I'll tell you, the proposed solution are calling cost of attendance. I have no idea what it really, what they mean by that. Euphemistically, they're paying players. That's what they're doing. Which you can see the problem here is an amateur sport. Well, there's two problems. The first is logical. How's that going to quell corruption? Because you give a kid six to ten thousand dollars for the last twelve months. What's going to keep him from taking five thousand from a booster if he wants to give it to him? Greed is a condition of humanity, and there is absolutely no logical dictate that giving these kids money, turning them into, turning them into semi-professional athletes. It's going to stop corruption. The other one is you take what makes college football so great, which is the amateurism. And in effect, you're making them mercenaries. You're making them semi-professional athletes. And I find the proposed solutions intensely terrifying. I, if it happens, I will be heartbroken because college football can be fixed, and it can be fixed by a powerful deterrent in the system. And right now, we do not have that. We do not have a deterrent system. And I'm not, philosophically speaking, a heavy-handed, retributivist, crime and punishment guy. I believe second, third, and fourth chances. I believe people are going to mess up. And if they're willing to change, you give them a handout. But I see college football much differently. I think the way you fix it is your heavy hand. Because college football is a privilege and it's not a right. Very few people have the opportunity to have their education paid for, have free rent, free food, free books, and a little bit of petty cash to spend on the weekends with your friends. You get to travel. If you're on a good team, you get to go to California or Florida every winter for two or three weeks. If you, you live a privileged existence, you don't need more than that. And if you're going to squander that, then what I would submit they need to do to fix the problems is number one, for your first offense, you are off the team for one calendar year. If you actually took away from them what they what they treasure most, which is playing the game, it would it would quell the behavior. And number two, your second offense, not only are you off the team permanently, but I would suggest that you are banned from all college athletics indefinitely at all levels in all sports, and you have to pay back the money that has been lended to you by the year endowed scholarship. I believe a heavy-handed term to fix the corruption, and I believe the current problem is going to take a great, largely pure amateur game and turn it into semi-professional sport. Mr. Dosmaster. In college, I swam and I was a scholarship athlete. And the only thing I remember us getting was free bananas and oranges. <laughs> now, moving on to our next speaker. The title of his speech is Story TMI. Telling stories and speeches is challenging because there is always the question of how much detail to leave in, what details to leave out, and how much detail is enough. Our next speaker has been struggling with his stories for many years and re recently discovered the works of world championship speakers, which gave